All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. morning. It's nice to see faces, lots of faces. (laughs) Um, Today, I'd like to speak to you on a topic or a person that's quite dear to me. Um, The title of my preach, and I encourage you guys to take notes. Please take notes. (laughs) I don't have much time today, and there's some scriptures that I'm going to fly by. So take them down and check them for yourselves. Um, But the title of my preach today is The Disciple Whom Jesus Loved. Before we jump into um, me talking at you for 10 minutes, I want you to uh, write down this question and think about it while I'm speaking. Do you see yourself as a disciple whom Jesus loved or loves? So who is the disciple whom Jesus loved? Um, We see this phrase pop up in the book of John, uh, the Gospel of John, and John is the author of that book, and we see that in chapter 21, verses 24, he actually claims that he himself is the disciple whom Jesus loved. In that gospel, we refer to himself five times as the disciple whom Jesus loved, and he replaced his name every single time with that phrase. John didn't seem to think that Jesus' love was exclusively for him, as some people might joke. (laughs) He didn't think that it was for no one else, and we can tell this by how he wrote the rest of the gospel. You see in John chapter 11, verse 5, how he talks about Jesus' love for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. You see how he wrote in John chapter 13, verse 1, that Jesus loved his disciples very dearly. You see that in John chapter 15, John John writes about Jesus' love for all of us, those that remain in him. So it's clear to me that John wasn't, Uh, self-infatuated or thinking Jesus' love was exclusive to him. Also, names are very important to who we are, our identity, and ultimately our experience of life. If you turn to the person next to you and ask them who they are, nine times out of ten, they would mention their name. So why did John replace his name five times with this phrase? It is my understanding that John chose to focus on Jesus' love for him even over his own name. This suggests that John's most important identity was not in his name. It was in the love Jesus had for him. Another reason this may have been done is because focusing on Jesus' love for us makes us complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God, as Paul prays it in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, which reads... Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. The message version puts it like this. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives, full in the fullness of God. Focusing on Christ's love and claiming it as your highest identity puts you in a position to experience completeness and fullness of life, as we just read. John repeating the phrase, the disciple whom Jesus loved, and claiming it as his most important identity has inspired me and impacted my life, and hopefully it will inspire you to focus on the love that Jesus Christ has for us and to claim our identity within it. Jesus' love also allows us to to put being faithful over being successful. It allows us to strive for progression instead of perfection. And I mention this because we often claim our wounds or our flaws as our identity. I myself was guilty of this. Then we either live with that or try to work it out in our own perfection, in our own strength. Our identity doesn't need to be in our flaws or our wounds. It can be in God's love for us. So what is God's love for you? 
the first scripture that comes to mind is John 3.16, which reads, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God loves you and me freely with no reason why, no because. He demonstrated this by sending his one and only son to pay for all the sin we will ever do and to transform us into new creations should we choose to put our faith in Jesus. It's no surprise that John had a profound understanding of God's love, and that is clear in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Um, I know it's argued whether John wrote 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, um, but the writing is very similar to the Gospel of John, so we'll run with it for today. <laughs> it reads, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Clearly, it was a reality for John, and it should be the same for us. So why is it so important to focus on God's love? It's important because it's fundamental to our faith and our identity as Christians. When we focus on his love and grasp even a little understanding of how deep, how wide, and how long it is, it changes how we approach our everyday life. It leaves us undone, but ironically complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God, as it says in Ephesians. I actually wanted to look at that word fullness, um, and the word fullness in Greek is pleroma. Um, the word describes a ship with a full cargo and crew and a town with no empty houses. It strongly emphasizes fullness and completion and that is what ha will happen to your life when your identity is in the love of God. So some practical tips. How do we go about focusing on the love of God and grounding our identity within it? Uh, it could start with prayer and reflection, asking God to show you all the times he's expressed his love to you in your life. It could be as simple as telling yourself verbally every day that you are loved by Jesus, which is simple, but if we're real, that's effective. Or ask others about how the love of God has changed their lives and be encouraged by their testimony. Uh, you could spend time studying the Bible to see what Jesus has done for you and what he's done to you in love. He's made you guys a new creation, those that have chosen to, chosen to believe in him. Um, I definitely want to say that an experience is great, but alone it's no substitution for sound theology and understanding the gospel, understanding Jesus' finished work. When you focus on something and or experience something good, naturally you want to share it with others. So share God's love with one person this week, maybe through a kind act or through telling them what Jesus has done for them. So going back to that first question that I asked, do you see yourself as the disciple whom Jesus loved, as a disciple whom Jesus loves? Whether you do or don't, the Holy Spirit is key to the process of you grounding your identity in Jesus' love for you. As I said earlier, I used to place my identity in my flaws and my past mistakes. But placing my identity in Jesus' love changed the course of my life, and the Holy Spirit was a big part of that. So I'm just going to close out and pray for you guys. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you for this day, for all the people that are here today. And I pray that you would help us all place our identity and our security in your love. I pray that we would allow that to change our lives and impact our lives forever. And that we would trust and lean and rely on you to help us through that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.